Welcome viewers. Today, we're diving into a shocking story that's unfolding in the heart of West Africa. Buckle up, because we're about to explore the failed palace coup attempt against President Patrice Talon of Benin Republic. This is a tale of political intrigue, regional tensions, and the ongoing struggle for stability in Africa. Are you ready? Let's dive in. First, let's set the stage. Benin, a small country on the west coast of Africa, has a long and complex history when it comes to coups. Since gaining independence from France in 1960, Benin has experienced no fewer than seven successful coups. That's right, seven. Can you imagine living in a country where the government could change overnight so frequently? Drop a comment below if you've ever experienced political instability in your country. But here's where it gets interesting. Benin has actually been relatively stable since 1991, with regular elections and peaceful transfers of power. That is, until this recent coup attempt against President Patrice Talon. So, what's changed? And why now? To understand this, we need to look at the bigger picture. The Sahel region of Africa has been experiencing a wave of coups in recent years. Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Chad, all have seen their governments overthrown by military juntas. But why is this happening? Some point to frustration with corruption, others to the ongoing fight against jihadist insurgencies. What do you think is driving this trend of coups in the Sahel? Before we continue, just a gentle reminder to like and share our videos. Also, subscribe to the channel to stay informed on the latest African economic, political, and social developments and explore how global geopolitics impact the continent. Now let's continue. Now let's talk about President Patrice Talon. He came to power in 2016 and is currently serving his second term, which is set to end in 2026. Talon has been a vocal opponent of the recent coups in the Sahel region and has supported ECOWAS-imposed sanctions against the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. But has this stance made him enemies? And could it have contributed to this coup attempt? Here's where things get really intriguing. There are whispers of foreign involvement in this failed coup. Now, we don't have concrete evidence yet, but some are pointing fingers at certain countries that might have an interest in destabilizing Benin. Who do you think might benefit from chaos in Benin? Share your theories in the comments. But wait, there's more. We can't talk about Benin without mentioning the ongoing dispute with neighboring Niger over a crucial oil pipeline. Benin has been blocking Niger's access to this pipeline, which runs through Benin to the coast. Could this economic tension have played a role in the coup attempt? Now, let's talk about public opinion. President Talon's regime has been controversial to say the least. Some praise him for his economic reforms and infrastructure projects. Others criticize him for cracking down on opposition and limiting press freedom. What's your take on Talon's leadership? Is he a reformer or an autocrat in the making? As we wrap up this introduction, I want to remind you that we have exclusive footage of the police response to this coup attempt. You won't want to miss it, so make sure to watch till the end. But before we get to that, let's dive deeper into the history of coups in Benin. Did you know that between 1960 and 1972, Benin, then called Dahomey, had 11 different presidents? That's an average of one new president every year, the country was so unstable that it earned the nickname Latin Quarter of Africa due to its frequent coups. The most significant coup came in 1972 when Major Mathieu Kerekou seized power. He ruled for 19 years, first as a military dictator and then as an elected president. Kerekou's rule ended in 1991 when he was defeated in elections, marking Benin's transition to democracy. Since then, Benin has been seen as a model of democracy in West Africa. That is, until recent years, when concerns have been raised about democratic backsliding under Talon's administration. This latest coup attempt seems to suggest that all is not well in the Quartier Latin. Now let's zoom out and look at the recent wave of coups in the Sahel region. Since 2020, we've seen successful coups in Mali, twice, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Chad. These coups have been driven by a mix of factors, including 1. Frustration with corruption and poor governance. 2. 
the ongoing fight against jihadist insurgencies. Three, economic hardship. Four, a resurgence of anti-French sentiment. Interestingly, many of these coups have been popular with the public, at least initially. Why do you think people in these countries have been supportive of military takeovers? Is it a sign of desperation or a genuine belief that the military can solve their problems? President Talon has taken a strong stance against these coups, supporting ECOWAS sanctions and calling for a return to constitutional order. But this position has put him at odds with the new military regimes in the region. Could this have made him a target? Let's talk about Talon's tenure as president. He came to power in 2016, promising to be a rupture president who would break with the past and bring rapid development to Benin. He certainly made changes, but not all of them have been popular. On the positive side, Talon has overseen significant infrastructure development, including road construction and port expansion. He's also implemented economic reforms that have led to growth, but critics argue that this growth hasn't benefited everyone equally. On the negative side, Talon has been accused of cracking down on opposition and limiting press freedom. In the 2021 election, most opposition candidates were barred from running, leading to concerns about the state of democracy in Benin. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, foreign involvement. While we don't have concrete evidence, there's been speculation about which countries might have an interest in destabilizing Benin. Some have pointed to Russia, given its increasing influence in the Sahel region. Others suggest it could be linked to the pipeline dispute with Niger. Speaking of which, let's talk about that pipeline. Benin has been blocking Niger's access to a crucial oil pipeline that runs through its territory. This has been a major point of contention between the two countries. Could this economic pressure have played a role in the coup attempt? And how might this affect regional stability going forward? As we near the end of our discussion, I want to hear from you. What do you think about President Talon's leadership? Is he a necessary reformer pushing Benin towards development, or is he an autocrat in the making? And how do you think this failed coup attempt will affect Benin's future? Remember, we have exclusive footage of the police response to the coup attempt coming up. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned. Before we get to that footage, let's recap what we've learned. One, Benin has a long history of coups, but has been relatively stable since 1991. Two, the Sahel region is experiencing a wave of coup driven by various factors. Three, President Talon has opposed these coups and supported sanctions against military regimes. Four, there are whispers of foreign involvement in the failed coup attempt. Five, Benin is in a dispute with Niger over access to an oil pipeline. Six, opinions on Talon's leadership are divided with some praising his economic reforms and others criticizing his approach to democracy. As we watch the police footage, I want you to think about these questions. One, how will this failed coup attempt affect Benin's stability going forward? Two, what does this mean for democracy in West Africa? Three, how might this impact regional relations, especially with the Sahel states? Remember, your voice matters in this conversation. Share your thoughts, debate respectfully, and let's keep this important dialogue going. And now, without further ado, let's watch the exclusive police footage of the response to the coup attempt. Pay close attention, because what you're about to see could have major implications for the future of Benin and the entire region. Ladies and gentlemen, during the night of 23 to 2409 Dumil Vinkater, one shortly after 1 a.m., the former Minister of Sports, Mr. Osal Thromaki, was arrested. At the time he was transmitting six bags, filled with banknotes, to the commander of the Republican Guard. Initial investigations. It appears that the commander of the Republican Guard, in charge of the security of the head of state, was undertaken by the Minister Hazard Kamaki, for his own account, and on behalf of Buchan, to operate by force. One coup during the day, 
of 27-09 Dumilvinkater. It is in the C is in this framework, that from the 6th-08, interested parties have opened a bank account in the books of the Naya Ivory Coast, for the benefit of the commander of the Republican Guard. And the proof the opening of the account has been transmitted to beneficiaries, with one initial sound of CFA Frank 105.000.000 or completed to overcome the resistance of the commander of the Republican Guard, they promised him, and submitted on 2409 Dumil Vinkater in cash, one sum of CFA francs. And this amount is discounted in 129 lots of 10 million of 10,000 franc bills consisting of 5,000 franc bills. This woman who would have been mobilized was loaded in one vehicle the Type 4x4, the morning Toyota Prado, owned by Oswagro Mickey, has a false registration. It is on occasion, the delivery of the vehicle, some of one milliard sink sent million CFA francs that the criminal has proceeded to the arrest. Dos Altro Mickey and the commander of the Republican Guard. Misfortune that followed. Yes, yes, Boo Camp was also arrested by the elements of the criminal. The ongoing investigation is working to identify all those involved in these events. I will not miss if there is a need to come back to you to give you more information. Wow, that was intense. What did you think of the footage? Did anything surprise you? Let us know in the comments below. As we wrap up, I want to thank you for joining me on this deep dive into Benin's political drama. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more in-depth analysis of African politics and current events. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and keep pushing for a more stable and democratic Africa. The fight for true representation and good governance is far from over, and voices like yours can make all the difference. So, what role will you play in shaping Africa's future? The floor is yours. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion, please like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in our next video.